Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Paulicki. He's Jacob Liberta. You can find all our videos here on our YouTube channel, so please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you're a Timberwolves fan, give this video a like because it's officially playoff season. Um, although the Timberwolves are in the play-in, it's still a massive game here against the Los Angeles Clippers uh, Tuesday night at the Target Center. Biggest Timberwolves game in a long time, really, probably going back to the Jimmy Butler year. I guess you could say any of those playoff games or that game 82 against the Nuggets. But um, I'd say the excitement around this team is just a little more amped up just based on the likability of this team, um, just how it seems more sustainable given that it's a young group of players, all that sort of stuff. And it's not Tibbs coaching the team as well. So um, let's just jump right into it, though. Right As of right now, the Wolves are favored by three, you know, according to various different sports books and stuff like that. So – I'm, I'm just going to start out by saying I'm surprised that the Wolves are even favored in this game. I know they have home court, and I know that there's a, like a four-game difference in the standings or whatever, but the Clippers literally haven't lost a game in April. Paul George has been phenomenal since he's been back, and uh, the Clippers just won their last game of the regular season by 50 points, albeit against a terrible Thunder team. But um, I'm a little worried about this Clippers team, Liberta. How are you feeling about this? Yeah, you know, I think – First of all, I want to say off the top, when you mentioned the biggest game in a while, I would say, yeah, probably this feels comparable to that winner-take-all game 82 against the Nuggets a few years back. I think that's a more similar environment. I mean, uh, yeah. home game to basically get into the playoffs, that's essentially what it is. So I think there's a lot of similarities you can draw there. So I'm really hyped for this because that was a fun game to watch. I still remember that one. Probably, I would argue, that's the probably the best game we've seen as far as like the stakes – on the line and everything with this franchise for as long as we've been fans. Like that's, right. that's probably about as good as it gets. And that's not even a technically a playoff game. So that kind of sucks that that's the, that's our shining yeah. moments. But I think maybe we can make some new memories this year with this Clippers game. But yeah, like you said, we're, we're favored by three, but it's a little bit surprising just because it doesn't feel like we match up well, because the biggest problem with the wolves all season has been size. Like when we run into these big teams, we just get manhandled and dominated. I mean, it's mm-hmm. even gets the bad ones like Orlando. Orlando has a ton of size and they're a bad team, but they still won both games against us because we yep. just we just don't have that that flexibility to get big when other teams do. And that's the it's gonna be a problem with the Clippers because not only do they have the big size, but they have just talented players to basically complement that. So I think this is a tall task for us and I think we're we'll gonna have to do a lot of things right to win this game. But mm-hmm. I think just on paper and the first thing you got to talk about really probably is the lineup combinations that are going to basically get the best out of our guys or most out of our guys as possible as far as doing what we do best and that's scoring the basketball really and basically being able to limit what the Clippers do and I know it's it's going to be a challenge to probably offensive rebound as much as we have this year but we're going to have to probably find some way to do it because that's how we manufacture points even when our offense lulls and we miss shots which could very well be the case in this game that's right. that's kind of in our calling guard that and along with transition points we have to force turnovers like we have all season so i i think there's a lot of storylines but yeah it probably just starts with the the mismatch in size like these are two very opposite teams as far as yeah. that goes yeah i couldn't agree with you more and i think it's really going to be important for the wolves to get off to a good start in this game. I just think if you get behind early, um, the shots aren't falling, like you mentioned could very well happen. Albeit the Timberwolves, you know, made the most three point third, most three pointers ever in a regular season this season. That's Um, crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, they had a phenomenal season shooting wise, even if they weren't the most efficient team in the world. Um, So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm nervous that they maybe get off to a little bit of a slow start. It's a young team. I'm sure they'll be amped, you know, for this game in front of their home crowd. And, you know, I I could see it, you know, starting off slow. But, yeah, the size, the size matchups worry me a lot. And we'll kind of get into our second point here with the potential matchup issues because you talked about it. The Wolves have struggled all season long against big teams. And it's really because Cat's the only big player on this team. I mean, Jared Vanderbilt's the starting power forward. He's like 6'8", 6'9". Nas Reed's the backup center, but he's like 6'10", and he's lost like – what, 30 pounds since he's been in the NBA or something like that. Yeah. Um, so he's uh, narrowed down quite a bit too. We signed Greg Monroe for the rest of the season here to you know go on this playoff run with us. But, I mean, he's got no familiarity really in the system. He's only played a handful of games with the Wolves this season. And, you know, up until – well, yeah, he hasn't really played at all with the regulars yet So because um, he was here for that COVID stretch. So it's like yeah. – um, 
I don't know how or if he'll be incorporated at all into this mix, but I just I can see a guy like Nas Reed really struggling. I can see them baiting Cat into foul trouble right off the bat, which if Cat gets into foul trouble, we're really in trouble. So I, I think we're sunk then. Yeah, unless unless it's just a heroic performance from a guy like Ant or something like that. So what what are some other potential matchup issues you could see here uh, that the Clippers could maybe give the Wolves some fits? Yeah, I think it goes back to some of our worst games this year have been those against those defenses that draw it up where they can just have their center lurk in the middle around the paint and have some smaller, more rangy, athletic forward play with Cat on the outside. Because, I mean, that's when you look at the previous matchups with the Clippers this season, I, albeit three of them were back in November, but that's when we just got – we, we got dominated, quite frankly, and that's exactly what they did back then. Who knows? That could be the same thing they do now because, I mean, they got guys like Batum or Covington, and they have a guy like Zubots and Hartenstein or, I yeah. mean, you name it, that can just lurk in the middle and wait for Cat to attack the paint if he gets that far. But I think that's been a recipe for disaster for this Wolves team. I know Cat certainly moved the ball better as of late or as the season has gone on, being able to pass the ball to the right guys and just make the right play. But yeah. at the same time, we're going to kind of need him to – take over if we're going to win this game because everything has flown through him this year. And I don't think, like you said, barring heroic performances, like I'm talking probably 40, 50 point performances from a guy like Ants or d or something, like then yeah, it's going to fall on Cat if he doesn't have a good game for Sunk. And I could see this being one where we probably play him 40, 42 minutes or something just because we probably can't afford to have Nas out there for too long who can't body with anybody. He can't, mm-hmm. he can't play defense to save his life, especially against a big team like this. So realistically, a lot is on Cat's shoulders, and it kind of starts with him being able to continue to trend in the right direction as far as making the right play, getting around these guys like Batum or something, and then hopefully create some opportunities at, at the rim maybe for a cutter like Vandal or something, if they choose to start Vandal. I mean, that's another – interesting thing to think about right. how, many, how many minutes a guy like Vandal will get in a matchup like this who knows but I I think that's that's probably the biggest one is just the and it's not necessarily I guess a matchup but it, it is and it isn't just because they're going to be having a lot of focus on him so then yeah. it kind of comes down to what what we're going to game plan to break that and then as far as stopping PG on the other end I think that's probably the another question mark there I'd imagine we'll probably see a lot more Jaden McDaniels than and you might think, I guess, even though he's, mm-hmm. he could be, he could be starting. Who knows? But it'll probably come out the match. We'll play a lot of minutes just because he's probably the best matchup we got for him. I mean, maybe Ant if he's really engaged, but mm-hmm. it's, otherwise, it's probably Daniels. Yeah, and that's that's really an interesting thing to think about here. Is what's the rotation going to look like? I mean, yeah. um, it's you know it's the playoffs now, so Finch can afford to go down to eight guys and play the big three 40 minutes a night. You know, and I understand that uh, you know like. D'Angelo Russell probably isn't going to get like a ton of like he probably won't get like 40 42 minutes or something like Finch likes to look likes uh Jordan McLaughlin in the game because he moves the ball mm-hmm. so but I think between Ant and Cat they could definitely get some heavy minutes okay. and then it's just who are you going to use off the bench like Torian Prince is obviously a, going to be an important player for this stretch run um you need Jaden McDaniel's versatility Obviously, I just mentioned Jordan McLaughlin. Malik Beasley is going to be coming off the bench. So that's at least nine guys I can think of. And Cat's going to need a breather, too. So you're going to have to bring in a Nas or, you know, Nas or Greg Monroe. So that's a 10th. Yeah. So, I mean, most teams don't use 10 guys in in playoff games for rotation. So um, I'll be interested to see if Finch can find a way to cut that down. I don't really want him to just because of the way everything's been working. I mean, these bench guys have been playing very well. So that, that's going to – that's going to be an interesting wrinkle to factor in. But when it comes down to, you know, I really, I have all the faith in the world in Chris Finch. I think he's an excellent coach. He just did a phenomenal job this year. I'll keep banging the drum for him. Cause I just think he's probably second best coach in Timberwolves history, which isn't saying a whole lot, but, yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, we also have Patrick Beverly, who's a menace and he played for the Clippers for a while. So he knows a lot of the guys that are on that team. He knows Ty Lu. um, so, you know, he's he's very familiar with that organization, and I think he's he's going to have something to say about this matchup too. He's going to be mm-hmm. getting under people's skin, oh, yeah. uh, drawing fouls, um, maybe baiting technicals. I mean, who knows <laughs> what he's going to do. And obviously he'll bring the intensity defensively and maybe even offensively he'll give us a little bit too. So um, there's definitely intriguing storylines on both sides, but I just think that uh, – I don't know. I think the Clippers just have a ton of, you know, talent and – they're a more cohesive group because it's been kind of that same group for a little while there. And the wolves are obviously young and inexperienced in this kind of situation. So mm-hmm. I think there's definitely potential issues there, but I think 
I think this Wolves team is definitely good enough, has the skill, and I think they're a close-knit enough group that they can get this done. Absolutely, and anything can happen in winner take off, whether that's good or not for us being a home game. But I I really think, too, the Clippers, it's a tough matchup because they're also battle-tested, I would say, just because yeah. they played without PG for the large majority of the season. And they had to learn how to win or basically stay afloat to get to this position with a bunch of role players. And that's exactly what they've done. And now, like you said, they, their team was in the Western Conference Finals last year. And they, I think it's really coming together for them at the right time, unfortunately for us. But, mm-hmm. I mean, think about they can spread you out. Obviously, you got PG. I think that's front and center for this team right now with Kawhi out. But then you think about uh, even these other guys have been contributing for how long now with like Canard or coffee, like they've been yeah. playing well. And then you got obviously the bigs that we've already mentioned from uh, Zubas to Hartenstein. And you got uh, really rangy forwards like Covington and Batum. And I mean, Norman Powell, I think they, they got a lot of guys, Morris, they got a lot of guys that can play. It's just, yeah. and like you said, they're cohesive and it's just, they've been here, done that before where we have not. So I think that's, mm-hmm. that's, you just, you don't, really know what's going to happen until we show up and probably play a quarter's worth of basketball or something like that and see see if our guys are up to the task or not. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, what's your overall confidence level? On a, if you had to give it on like a scale of 1 to 10, <clears throat> what's your confidence level that the Wolves could actually pull this off? That they could or they will? <laughs> uh, that, that, that they will, because we both know that they could. So yeah. okay. That they will. Okay. On the plus side, We've been a very good team at home this year. We've definitely protected target center, and that's what that's a hallmark of a, a growing team, of a good team. And I think that certainly can't go unnoticed. And we've had some great seasons, especially out of our, our main guy, Kat. I mean, he's been borderline MVP candidate, I would say. Like, yeah. he's he's been lightening up. So then you got the emergence of Ant, especially fresh off that 49-point uh, 49, 49 performance last week. Yep. And albeit like the last two minutes, disregard those. I mean, before that, he had 46 and just had a super efficient night. He was doing everything. So, like, he can take over a game. So, on the downside, it's just like we lost three out of four against them this year. And I think they've only gotten better since then. So, I'd say my confidence level, I I think this is it's just a straight toss up. I'd say 50 50. I'd say a five out of 10. Oh. I think I could go either way on this side. Just, I, yeah, you always got to put your guard up, put a wall up for, these Minnesota teams, you, you got you to you you protect yourself. Yeah. You go in too optimistic, you get burned every single time. So it's true. you just, just got to have a little bit of hesitation. And then if we win this, then I feel like we're playing with house money, and then we'll be probably riding a bu- with a bunch of confidence going into that Grizzly series against a, maybe a, a better matchup, to be honest, in some regards. Just, I know that sounds yeah. a little weird, but it's just a better matchup because they're similar as far as experience level goes. And I think as far as just not being as big of a team as the Clippers are. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. Memphis is Memphis is the better team, that, you know, a total body, body of work this season. Absolutely. When it comes when it comes to the playoffs, they they last year were in the situation we're in now, except they missed the playoffs, I think, because they lost sure. the play in games, right? No, they they ended up winning their first playing game against the Spurs, and then they won against the Warriors to get that eight spot, but then they got smoked by I think Utah. That's right. You're right. Yeah. yeah, they did. So they did squeak in last year's the eight seed, which the Wolves could potentially do this season too, and have to play Phoenix and get smoked in the first round. So yeah, no. we're in a very similar situation that Utah was last year, but Utah, like you said, doesn't have that playoff experience really outside of getting smoked by the Utah Jazz. So it's like they're just like they're one step further ahead of us. They're one year further ahead of us. And I think that puts them in a vulnerable position where they're going to be the favorite because they're the two seed. The pressure's all on them. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The, and like you said, the Wolves are playing with house money, and you know they can just go up and play free, play their game. And when you have talented players like Cat and Ant on your side, I mean, anything can happen. Yeah, Mem- think- Memphis has John ja Morant and a host, you know, just a bevy of uh, great, you know, role players. But I mean, we got two superstars, and they got one, you know. Yeah, exactly. And Cat, I think, could feast in a series against Memphis that doesn't have anything to guard him on the perimeter. And really, he can do whatever he wants. So I'd, I'd yeah. be really excited about that. But again, it's got to get over this big hump of the Clippers game. No kidding. All right, real quickly before we wrap up, give me your score prediction for this game. All right. Well, let's say we win. Why not? Well, I'm going to say we <laughs> win. And I'm going to say this is going to be a gritty game that I think everybody's going to lay it all out there. So. I don't think buckets would be easy to come by, which is kind of to the dismay of our team, seeing as though we were one of the top offenses, if not the top offense, as far as efficiency goes in yeah. the league. So, yeah, I, I got to say, 
and then obviously points we're getting through those big things. But I'll say we win 197. Oh, low scoring, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you were going to pick them to lose, I was going to pick them to win. But now yeah. I'm, pro- I'm probably going to pick them to lose just because <laughs> we can't be too homer. And, yeah. uh, I mean, there's a very good chance they lose this game, I think. So I'm going to pick the Clippers like 120 to 108. Oh, Okay. I think the Clip, Clippers <laughs> Clippers pull away a little bit in the fourth quarter, but I don't. I, it's not going to be a blowout either way. I don't think. I, I mean, I would be extremely disappointed if the Wolves just no showed for this game and got absolutely smoked. Oh, that soured me so bad. And that'd be another thing to try and pick yourself up from for a Friday playing game against the, yes. maybe another bad matchup with like New Orleans or something that that certainly didn't didn't go like super great this year. We split the series, and honestly, like it was evident how bad our defensive rebounding was from those games. So yeah, that, and then coming off a deflating loss like this, that could be hard. Exactly, that might be a Greg Monroe situation against New Orleans there because absolutely Val- Valanciunas always goes after Cat and it gets chippy, and yeah, just. I hate exactly. that matchup. I hope it doesn't have to come to that. Let's just say uh, that much. Let's hope not, yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but we'll do another video here after the after their Clippers game and see where we're going from there. So Absolutely, and we'll be, we'll be there at that Clippers we will. game. We will. We'll be there in the flesh to see it all go down. So <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Um, give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. How do you feel the Wolves are going to do this year? Um, or in this playing play game, excuse me. And do you think they have a good shot of beating the Clippers? And, you know, if they do, can they hang with Memphis? So let us know your thoughts and uh, maybe give us some potential matchup issues you can think of as well. So until next time, thanks for watching.